The first time I read Robert Greene's book, I hated him so much that I assumed he was the devil, or at least the brother of the devil. The devil is your brother? I mean, who in the world advises people to pose as a friend but work as a spy? How can he write that we should keep people in suspended terror? Keep people in suspended terror <laughs> is the law. So if you're completely predictable and everybody knows what your next move is and they know what you're going to say and what you're going to do, mm -hmm. they start to take you a little bit for granted. Who in the world writes that you should keep others dependent on you and even use bait if need be? Make others come to you. How can he write that I shouldn't trust people? I think humans are actors. Don't accept what you see with your eyes. And to make matters worse, Robert Greene's books are filled with this ungodly idea that every human you meet is an animal ready to act like a lion, a shark or a scorpion. We consider ourselves human. Obviously we're human beings, but I don't buy that definition. I think that we're actually animals. We're an aggressive animal. We have an animal nature. We are animals of necessity. We possess this like a, an animal quality, but we don't know how to use it. Okay, 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 stop, stop. After reading a part of 48 Laws of Power around 2007, I dropped the book and I wished I never touched it again. The reason for this is obvious. Like most people watching this video, most of the self-help books I've read all my life were influenced by Norman Vincent Pale's 1952 book. Positive thinking works wonders. Then I read a lot of Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins and authors like that. Almost all self-help books out there ask us to think positively, be nice to people, trust them to treat us well and focus on the bright side of life. In an ideal world, such messages are all you need. Unfortunately, our world is filled with many lions and scorpions which leads me to the first thing I learned from reading Robert Greene's books. In the year 2017, one of my friends visited my office with a guy who was like 19 years old. A few days later, that 19-year-old guy cried to my office. He had lost his job, had no money to feed, and seriously needed me to employ him. Since I knew him with my good friend, I hired him immediately. And since he came from my friend, I trusted him. I gave him a lot of free reign within my company. He was working in our customer care department, but I never bothered to monitor him until I caught him stealing my money. I was shocked, but he cried and promised not to do it again. Please forgive me. But I was a fool. A few months later, this guy sold one of our company's products and never reported the sales to the company. I caught him again and fired him. One year after I fired him, I hired him back, thinking he must have learned his lesson since he never got any good job as the one I gave him. I was wrong. But this time around, I wouldn't wait for him to steal from me. Instead, I sent my sister-in-law to call my company and pretend that she had problems paying into the company's account. My sister-in-law asked for his personal account and paid into it. He sold my company's product, got the money into his bank account, and never reported the sales. Needless to say, I fired him forever. I kind of always thought you were my best friend. The lesson here is this. Be realistic in your dealings with people. First, never put too much trust in friends or relatives. And that's law number two of 48 Laws of Power. On page 12 of the 48 Laws of Power, Robert Greene wrote, and I quote, You often don't know your friends as well as you imagine. In the same book, he advised that you should never hire your friends or relatives. The story I told you shows how trusting someone because you know them somewhere is not smart. Generally, in my dealings with people, I have learned to be suspicious and to trust slowly. The reality of life is that nobody tells you their mind. If you met a person that said exactly what he felt every time, you know, you would hate that person. He would, never get a, he would never have any friends. It then means that you have to watch what people do, not what they say. 
you also have to look for patterns in their behavior and don't be fooled to believe smiles mean nice. And this leads me to the second thing I learned from Robert Greene's book. On page 87 of The Laws of Human Nature, Robert Greene wrote, People's hostile or resistant actions never come out of the blue. In the same book, he wrote that people never do anything once. As I said in, in Laws of Human Nature, nobody ever does one, something just once. As you can see in the story I told you, when that guy first stole my company's money, he begged and cried. I forgave him because that is what my mother taught me. But he stole my money again and again, and even after I fired him for a whole year and let him suffer, he still came back and did it again. So here's the truth I've learned about life. Nobody does something just once. If you lie to me once, you're a liar. If you steal my money once, you're a thief. If you backbite, that's your habit. In your dealings with people, they'll often tell you, Oh, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. I lied to you, but I'll never do it again. I cheated on you, but I will never do it again. <laughs> well, most times, they'll do it again. So watch out and look for patterns. On page 75 of The Law of Human Nature, Robert Greene wrote, Observe, observe, observe. Another important lesson I learned from Robert Greene's book is that to become a master in any field, to have real, lasting success, you need to forget the idea of shortcuts. To develop any kind of skill takes time, patience, and discipline. In his 2012 book, Mastery, Robert Greene wrote, and I quote, Mastery is not a function of genius or talent, it is a function of time and intense focus applied to a particular field of knowledge. Another idea in this book is that you have to focus intensely on a single thing to become a master in such a thing. In Mastery, Robert wrote, and I quote again, You must avoid at all costs the idea that you can manage learning several skills at a time. You need to develop your powers of concentration and understand that trying to multitask will be the death of the process. The idea that if I can focus on something intensely, study and practice long enough, I can create a masterpiece changed my life. Another point I think might help you here is that Robert often recommends that the best way to become a master is to know who you are. You have to have a lot of self-awareness and self-knowledge. Know thyself, say the ancient Greeks. You have to know who you are, know what you're good at, know what you're bad at. Writing about how to figure out who you are, Robert often recommends that you look back to your childhood. In childhood, in your early years, you're kind of in tune with this. You're drawn to sports, to chess, to mathematics, to music. When you're a child, when you're five or six, to kind of know that you like this, you like sports, you like physical activity, or you like music, or you like words, or you like working with your hands. In his 2001 book, The Art of Seduction, Green wrote, Try to persuade a person by appealing to their consciousness, by saying outright what you want, by showing all your cards and what hope do you have. You are just one more irritation to be tuned out. Previously on this channel, I made videos on how advertisements in the 20th century often targeted consumers' brains and consciousness. For example, this 20th century Coca-Cola ad says, Your thirst takes wings. In other words, drink Coke if you're thirsty. Compare that to Coke's recent ads, Taste the Feeling, or Open a Coke, Open Happiness. As discussed in my previous videos, which you can see in the description box below, most marketers stopped appealing to humans' brains when they discovered that we are vain and emotional. We think that we're rational, but really our emotions govern us. In your business dealings, you have to understand that people always judge a book by its cover. So put the best cover on your book. People want to know what is in it for themselves, not for you. So tell them what's in it for them. People want to be entertained, so entertain them. The idea of seduction and the way I apply it are closely related to the theme of Green's 2018 book, The Law of Human Nature. 
In the law of human nature, green confronts you with a simple concept, which is you're an emotional animal, just like everyone. In the law of human nature, Green wrote, you like to imagine yourself in control of your fate, consciously planning the course of your life as best as you can, but you are largely unaware of how deeply your emotions dominate you. You can be seduced, captivated or triggered, just like everyone else. And the problem that we have with people is that we're so emotional. It's impossible for us to detach our emotions from our personal inter interactions. Knowing how weak you are should help you become a little careful and pay more attention to your emotions. As Robert often writes in his books, the power game is in the emotions. Robert's Green 2006 book, 33 Strategies of War, was written with the idea that life is a war and you have to understand how to fight through it. For me, the most memorable part of the book is the story of Napoleon Bonaparte, who was named the commander of the French forces fighting the Austrians in Italy in April of 1796. Napoleon was only 26. He was short and had an unmotivated army. To make his situation worse, nobody believed in him. However, on May 10, 1796, while fighting at the bridge of Lodi, suddenly the French soldiers saw Napoleon riding up in front of them. Napoleon put his very life at risk against the enemy as he directed the attacks, standing in the front. His unmotivated soldiers suddenly got caught up in his enthusiasm. If this guy could run in front of us, then we can follow him, they said to themselves. From there on, Napoleon Bonaparte became one of the most respected generals in history. But this wasn't because he had everything he needed, not even because other people believed in him, but because he believed in himself. This is a similar theme to Robert Greene and 50 Cent's 2009 book, The 50th Law. As Robert Greene wrote in The Art of Seduction, seduction is about self-esteem, so is the game of life. People who believe in themselves step out boldly. Because these people step out, others are tempted to believe that they have some special capacity, so they follow them and help them succeed. When I realized that most of Robert Greene's opinions are bitter truths about life, I decided to consume his books. And from there on, about three of his books have become my Bibles. This is not to claim that I have read every word Robert Greene wrote, but I have read from all his books and picked a lesson or two from all of them. Here are a few lessons that stuck with me. Be realistic in your dealings. Love people and trust them, but also look back and watch sometimes. Don't believe when people tell you their bad behavior was a one-time mistake. They have probably done the same a million times. Humans are products of habit. Subject yourself to mastery, which means you should stop expecting easy success. Choose a battle and dedicate your entire life to fighting it. Don't just appeal to people's reasoning, appeal to their emotions also. In Robert's words, seduce them. And lastly, like Napoleon Bonaparte, believe in yourself if you want others to believe in you. If you care to know a little more detail about Napoleon Bonaparte's story of grass to grace, and how believing in yourself can drastically change your life, click the video on your screen now. Thanks for watching.